guys, welcome to the Easter series today. It's the first video. Um, and I'm so very excited because I love to talk. It's so difficult to edit my videos that are short because I just talk with them. So this series is about turning Easter back to Jesus. You know, because I feel everyone, every kid sees Easter as like, chocolates and a bunny and eggs you know and I think I think that's okay I think um, Easter hunting and stuff is fun but I think it should always be brought back to God and Jesus and um, it should be explained to kids why we are celebrating this holiday as it is one of the most important holidays for Christians and I mean everyone celebrates Easter so I think it's important that everyone knows why we celebrate Easter. So stay tuned because I'm going to be posting today, tomorrow, Saturday and up until Easter Sunday. So yeah, so this series is going to focus on um, bringing Easter back to Jesus on a personal level, on a family level and on a evangelism level. So it just, it, ooh, it builds on boldness. So you need God in your heart, you need to be centered with him, you need a relationship with him before you can take him to your family and talk about Jesus. <laughs> so then it goes up the scale. Then you need evangelism. So then you need to be so centered in Jesus' love. And I promise you, you're going you're gonna to get that boldness. The more time you spend with God, the more boldness you're going to have, the more you're going to want to spread his word and evangelize. I'll get into evangelism um, on Sunday. So it's personal, family, and then you go out into the world and spread the gospel. So I'm Abby. Um, I've been doing a Jesus Week series because I think it's important to bring Jesus back into our daily lives as a habit. Having Jesus in your life daily is so, so very important. So I've been posting 30 second shorts on YouTube, which is called the Jesus Week Journey. I have a few playlists on it and then yeah all my shorts are about Jesus week uh, so yeah so please go check it out I'm 17 years old and Jesus has called me to spread the gospel on the YouTube platform I just hope this channel can be a light in the darkness um, as Jesus was for this world I'm so excited to start this journey um, and there are so many videos planned I mean God is just like talking he's just like so it's and it's not even overwhelming because it's with his strength that i'm doing this so yeah i'm very excited um yeah so let's talk easter so if you didn't know um the week leading up to easter is called holy week so from palm sunday up until easter sunday so you'd say today is Holy Thursday, but tomorrow is Good Friday, and then you have Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday. I'm going to be focusing on Good Friday and Easter Sunday today, but I'm posting on Saturday as well, and as well as now on Holy Thursday. So what is Easter about? Easter is the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ died on the cross for our sins. He saved humanity. You guys, I'm busy editing this video and I'm so sorry for my hair being on the mic the whole time. It's annoying me. Um, so please excuse that. <laughs> the punishment for even sinning once is death. Um, so Jesus died so that we can have an eternal life with... Oh, no. Wow! The punishment for even sinning once is death. Um, so Jesus died. So that we can have eternal life with him in heaven so yeah it's just great so all of us can have eternal life if you believe that jesus is lord jesus died for us on the cross for our sins and we will have eternal life you'll get it you have it and if you live for jesus you have eternal life i mean who would not want to live for jesus i mean like like you know i hope this channel guides you to know how to live for Jesus, because that's also a big question. But I mean, I'm sure you have someone in your life that isn't just religious, but has a relationship with God. So on Good Friday, 
uh, which is tomorrow, Jesus was crucified falsely because Jesus is an innocent man. Jesus never sinned um, once, not once. He purely died for our sakes. He died so that we can have eternal life. And it's very important to understand that. And then on Saturday, Holy Saturday, he laid in the tomb after the crucifixion. On Easter Sunday, while it was still dark, it was very early in the morning, um, Mary got to the tomb and she saw the rock was pushed aside and the tomb was empty. She freaked out. She was like, where did you guys move Jesus? Where would you put him? Why would you move him? And she still didn't realize it's the prophecy that Jesus gave them. He told them, I'm going to be crucified, I'm going to die, and then I'm going to rise after three days. And Sunday is three days after. So they didn't realize that. Mary went to the other disciples and she told, freaked out. And she was like, someone moved him and then they freaked out. So it was like, uh. And Mary got, went to the tomb again and then two angels appeared to her t asking her, why, why are you so disturbed? Like, what's wrong with you? And she said, um, someone moved my Lord. Like, someone moved him. Where is he? I don't know where he is. And then they said, but Jesus is right behind you. And then she turned around and then Jesus was like, why are you so disturbed? <laughs> so, I think that's cool. I think that's very cool. So yeah, so Jesus is amazing. You can find the story of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is mentioned in the New Testament, the other books of the New Testament. The most detailed are on those four books. I'll give the specific verses in another video. In John 20 verse 1. The empty tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So yeah, this is when she finds out Jesus isn't there anymore. But as we know, because we've read the story, uh, Jesus has risen, so no one has moved him. Yeah, so I mean, Jesus has died for your sins, man. The least you can do is dedicate a life to him. And you're going to want to, if you know Jesus, you're going to want to have a life with him. You're going to want to live for him. You won't want the things of the world, you know. Temptation is always there, don't get me wrong. There's a verse in John, I'll put it on the screen, um, where he's talking to the Samaritan woman. So, okay, so I found the verse. Um, so... This is when Jesus speaks to the Samaritan woman. So it is in John 4, verse 13. He said, so he was talking to her and she was like, do you think you're greater than our father Jacob that gave us this well? And he said, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. It is so powerful. It just shows we don't need the things of this world. We only need God, you know. So, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to share that. So, how do we turn Easter back to Jesus? So, I put this in three categories. Um, well, God help me. I just wanted to share with you guys that God, like, called me to give this message to you guys. And it's actually, you know, they always say God has a humor because he gave this to me yesterday. I mean, I have to plan like a whole weekend of videos and film it, but I'm doing it because it's not with my own strength, it's with the Lord's strength, you know? So, it's just so amazing, but he's funny. He's a funny guy. Um, he helped me put this into three categories. So, the first level is on a personal level. So, on a personal level, you turn Easter back to Jesus. Then on the second level is family orientated. So, you turn Easter back to Jesus with your family then the third level is evangelism this is spreading the gospel in the world so it's God preparing you so you're on a personal level you need to have a personal relationship with him you cannot do anything without him and then with your family so the people closest to your heart um, then you spread the gospel with them and then you take it to the world that's where the boldness comes out but don't worry because if you pray for boldness, God will give you boldness. He'll give you situations to become bold in, you know. It doesn't just happen, but it'll give you situations where you can be bold and you will be bold. So um, on Friday, I'll be um, practicing what I'm preaching and I'll be...
turning Easter back to Jesus on a personal level. On Saturday, I'll turn Easter back to Jesus with my family. And on Sunday, it will be spreading the gospel. And we'll find different ways to do that. There are a bunch of different ways. Um, I'll, talk, I'll talk about it on, in Sunday's video. Um, evangelism means spreading the gospel. So it can be a lot of things. It's not as complicated as it sounds. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So on a personal level, which is tomorrow, we're going to dedicate time to Jesus. Take this time spent with Jesus from tomorrow as a daily habit for the rest of your life. This is very important. Spending time with God is so important. It's what you need. You don't need a house. You don't need a car. You need Jesus. That's it. So we're going to be spending time with Jesus alone um, because this is a personal level. We need to build the foundation. And we're going to thank him for dying for us on the cross for our sins, thank him for everything in our lives. And then we're going to praise him because that's also a way to thank him. And you know, Jesus deserves all glory. He deserves all praise. So we're going to do that. And then later on the day tomorrow, we're going to read passages about Easter, um, which is in Matthew chapter 27 to 28. And it's in Mark chapter 15 to 16. It's in Luke chapter 23 to 24 and in John chapter 19 to 20. As I mentioned, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is mentioned in other books in the New Testament. But these four books have the best description of the crucifixion and what happened in Holy Week. So, yeah, so go read that. Um, but we'll do that together tomorrow as well. Then we're going to look at a Bible plan and then we're going to repent. I think this is a great time to repent, to finally give in and let go of that sin and open the door because Jesus is always knocking. He's going to knock and knock and chase you until you open that door. So you better, you better know that, <laughs> just saying. He never stops chasing. Um, there's a song that says um, he'll never stop chasing. So it's true. We're going to talk about you maybe talking to the person you've been wanting to spread the gospel with. Um, even if that's just saying that Jesus loves you or something, you know, you have to start somewhere. And then also about forgiving the person or people you've been wanting to forgive. Yeah, so that's going to be a difficult one, but we, we have to do that. Okay, so on the second level, we're talking about ways to turn Easter back to Jesus with your family. I have plenty of ways. This can be a quiz night. Do a quiz night with your family on Easter weekend. You know, this is having the presence of God and talking about Jesus and having fun and like spending time together because that's the point, you know. Um, and you can have a worship session with your family, which is amazing. That can be very... Wow, yeah, that can be amazing. Then you and your family can discuss what Jesus has done. Why is Easter a holiday? And you can discuss the crucifixion, the resurrection of Jesus. And then just discuss, thank Jesus for everything in your life. And then discuss what you're thankful for with each other. I think that's very important. If you have someone on your mind when I mention the next activity, um, just it's Jesus talking to you. So the next one is invite. A person to join your family for Easter. If that person doesn't have family to celebrate with, invite that person. I think that would mean so much and it's spreading the love of Jesus because Jesus would invite that person. You know, at the end of the day, it's what would Jesus do? I love that saying. Invite that person, okay? If you can think, if someone pops up into your head, that is God talking to you and telling you, invite that person, okay? So do that. That's a great one. And then the last one is communion. I love this one. This is where you have the piece of bread and your red wine or grape juice, which I would do. So I'm going to explain what communion is in the Bible. It's in 1 Corinthians 11. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26. So, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this is a way to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. As he states in John, he is the bread of life. And Jesus' blood is all powerful. So we celebrate his blood and his life on earth and that he died for our sins. So I think that's a very nice way to share the love of Jesus. And I think if you go to church on Sunday, um, your church will do communion. I'm sure of it. Then on the third level, we are talking about evangelism. It's simple. Evangelism means spreading the gospel. Whether this is telling a random person, Jesus loves you, that's evangelism. Whether it is putting a Bible verse in someone's mailbox, that's evangelism. You're spreading the gospel. They're going to find that Bible verse, they're going to think about it, and they might give their hearts to Jesus one day. You know, planting the seeds to grow a harvest. You need to plant that seed, Jesus will grow the harvest. Now, evangelism can also mean you finally sharing that testimony with the world. Post a video, share your testimony. So do that, finally post that video if you've been wanting to. But like I mentioned in the examples, put that Bible verse in someone's mailbox or someone's bag at school. You know, evangelism is for always, it's not just this weekend. You should always be spreading the gospel or tell someone Jesus loves you. Tell your brother Jesus loves you, you know, just anyone. If you've been wanting to talk to your friend or family member, about Jesus and that they are living a life in religion or if they don't believe, tell them, tell them the truth of Jesus Christ. This is the time to do it. Tomorrow is not promised. Um, so I think it's very important that you talk to those people. And if they don't listen, pray. Prayer is so strong. Ask people, ask your family members to pray with you. Where two or more are gathered, um, the Lord is there. That is also a Bible verse. That is the beginning of our Easter weekend series. I hope you guys understand. And I hope we can turn Easter back to Jesus together. Stay tuned for the rest of the weekend. Put your post notifications on to be reminded about the videos I'm posting. Because you know, we're human, we forget. And subscribe, please. We want to build our family. Like the video if you liked watching it. Jesus loves you. I love you. Have an amazing day.